Time to talk some royal news now with our mate Russell Myers in the UK. Uh, Russell, commiserations on the cricket, but thanks for finding time to talk to us. Well, let's not get, not get too carried away with ourselves, Paul. There's an awful long way to go just yet. So uh, let's keep calm and carry on in this instance. I do not disagree. A five-test series, uh, so we'll all see what happens. All right. Now, before we get to the Harry and Meghan of it all, there's lots of other things to talk about with you, including, I tell you what, uh, the, the, the PR machine that is Prince Louis and Princess Charlotte, they've got to milk that for everything it possibly can because they have become sort of an event within events, including a trooping in the colour. People turn around and, and they sort of wait for the moment for these two to be impeccably behaved and poorly behaved at the same time. Well, they do. I mean, listen, if you could bottle what they've got, they'd be selling it for a fortune, wouldn't they? Because every single sort of big event we've had over the last couple of years, everybody's sort of looking and waiting to see what Prince Louis gets up to next. I mean, we had, you know, the theatrics on the balcony at the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. Then we had sort of the coronation concert. Uh, and now what, whatever next? I mean, um, listen, I love Prince Louis. I think in a, in a very dark world sometimes, we all need a bit of cheering up and he's certainly the antidote to a lot of what's going on and certainly you know we've had a lot going on in the royal family we've had scandal infighting a plenty and uh, you know these these are the the new generation the new blood coming through aren't they so they may be pre pretty young uh, now i mean george is you know, just nine uh, and prince louis is only only five at the moment but i think it gives you an indication of uh, of what the future holds and just how close those uh, those siblings are and that can only be a good thing my youngest daughter, Zadie, is five, and I can tell you what, if she had to stand still on a balcony for even two minutes, exactly the same reaction would be there. So good to know that there is uniformity and normality among five-year-olds, regardless of what household you are uh, being brought up in. Uh, Prince William, of course, is trying to find uh, purpose and focus to his role as the Prince of Wales. And I think that his decision to try to uh, elevate visibility and to try to fix homelessness is an excellent example of something that someone who has a lot should be doing for those that have so little. I think it's a great idea. This is exactly the type of cause I like people getting behind. Well, absolutely. And listen, I, I can see the reasons why people might sort of, you know, be a bit cautious with this because sometimes people say that what sort on earth would, uh, would Prince William or the rest of the royals know about uh, such issues such as homelessness? But I think he's been you know, pretty upfront in saying that, yes, we are very, very privileged. We have uh, an incredible amount of wealth and privilege behind us. But yet, you know, giving us an insight into those school uh, trips uh, in taking his children to school every morning and seeing people homeless on the streets. He said that's something that he hasn't shied away from for his, from his kids. And he does explain it to them. And of course, that, that's something that they're going to have to tackle with as well. Uh, and just recently, in the last couple of days, we've heard about this new project that's going to be released next week. Um, at Kensington Palace saying that this is going to be his life's work. He thinks he can end homelessness. I mean, it's a pretty bold statement, but he's bringing together the people that matter, uh, a lot of stakeholders, but a lot of jargon used. But I think once you get down to the nub of what he wants to do, is to try and make a real difference. And uh, and that's all he can do. He can only do his best in this instance. But if he's going to turn over to the, you know, to some of his uh, estate into social housing, well, you know, wouldn't that be an incredible gesture? And, uh, and, and I can only applaud him for doing that. So really excited to see what this project holds. Yeah, that's that's the key here, right? Which is, it's one thing, and, I, and we've talked about this before, about the need for the younger royals and certainly the next generation of the monarchy in William and Kate to show that it's not good enough just to do garden parties, very polite, appropriate for the generation at the time. It's not good enough just to uh, turn up at a charity event as a way of raising awareness, but they have a capacity to be able to slice off some of their own personal wealth and personal power to change somebody's life and to actually uh, show that you've got skin in the game. Because to me, when we're searching for what does all of this mean now, all of us, over the extreme majority of us, have only known one monarch, and we frankly know that Charles is going to be the, the bridge between uh, the two, between grandmother and grandson. Um, it's really important that William doesn't do it the way his dad did and doesn't do it the way that his grandmother did it. Well, you're totally right. I mean, uh, it, it, Charles is going to have, uh, of course, a, a lot shorter 
uh, run at it. And uh, it, we already know what sort of a man he is, don't we, already? We know he's passionate about the environment, architecture. We know he's, uh, he's, you know, he's met world leaders aplenty over the last 50 years. But William is just embarking on his journey. And we kind of now need to know what sort of a man he is going to be and what sort of a future king he's going to be as well. And th talking about those conversations that he's had with these children already. I mean, you're, you're talking, they're only sort of a nine, eight and five. And you know, those conversations are pretty hard to have with children, especially children growing up in palaces and used to um, yeah, socialising with kings and queens as it is. So well, what does the future hold for William and Kate? Well, it won't just be garden parties. It needs to be bigger events. Those conversations are already being had in society. What uh, role does a monarchy have in a modern world? And they're acutely aware of that, of course. So listen, I think we just got to wait and see sort of how the, the dust settles after you know, the, the, her late uh, majesty's passing. We've just had the coronation. Now we're seeing these big projects take hold, whether it's Kate with early uh, learning with uh, children or whether it's William with homelessness. I think these are going to be live projects over the next few years that are really going to take shape. And, uh, you know, good luck to them. Andrew was missing yet again from public functions. Of course, he's technically a royal, but hardly a working one. They do everything they can to hide him because they're worried about him getting booed. Um, this is your beat. So what the hell does he do all day? Well, you know, that, I mean, this is a very real fear. We might laugh and joke at it sometimes about him being booed or, you know, not having good receptions in public. But you can bet that that was serious conversations being had within the palace, certainly at, at, at the coronation, uh, at the, the Queen's passing as well during the funeral. What sort of role would he have? I mean, listen, he does st still feel, regardless of everything that has gone on in the past, that he still has a role to play. I mean, I think he's probably the only person in the world who thinks that he's got a role to play in the royal family or otherwise. But yeah, he's still a young man. He's 63 years old. He doesn't really want to retire. I mean, what does he do? I and mean, we've seen him riding a horse around Windsor. We've seen these sort of uh, these pictures of him nearly um, colliding into pedestrians, not quite literally, but him driving down the street and people not exactly knowing who he is or, or where he's driving. And, uh, and that's all we see of him at the moment. So he's living a pretty solitary life. Whether he's going to be able to uh, live in his Royal Lodge mansion for much longer remains to be seen because we've seen these stories of the king potentially wanting to evict him and him, uh, you know, putting him in uh, Harry and Meghan's old place. Well, he's digging his heels in over that. And of course, he still lives with his ex-wife, Sarah Ferguson. So, you know, she's got skin in the game as it is as well so that's still a sort of a royal rumble that's uh, rumbling on as it were so i think uh, that's pretty much is uh, the only thing that's keeping him busy at the moment now we all know that media deals come and go but uh harry and megan have not left spotify with spotify people being concerned that they are leaving instead of course famously uh, bill simmons one of the great podcasters and one of the bosses at spotify says that uh, well they were grifters basically he's always had a pretty low threshold for them but uh, there's all sorts of claims now including that maybe some of the things that were being presented on that podcast were not quite what they seemed well, I suppose let's first start with Bill Simmons' words, and they were pretty punchy anyway. I mean, uh, you ever politely have uh, sort of sugarcoated it, what he did say. I mean, it was, uh, it was, it was a flowery to say the least. Now, listen, Bill Simmons, hugely respected figure in the podcasting world, uh, a senior bod at Spotify. And if he is calling them out for their work ethic or were their ideas behind the millions of dollars that they were being given, and now the fact that they don't have a Spotify deal anymore. I suppose we've got to sit up and listen. Then we've had the business of whether uh, Meghan Markle would be signed to Dior. I think that was probably a bit wishful thinking on her part. And now we've had these stories uh, coming out that, you know, she wasn't doing the recording. She wasn't doing the interviewing um, for her podcast and all the interviews that she did with Paris Hilton and Serena Williams. I mean, listen, that might be a bit too far. I'm sure she was diligently trying to work on the podcast herself. Whether it was a success or not, I think it was a bit more of uh, people trying to wonder what she was coming up with in the first instance. That's why the ratings were so high. But it hasn't lasted for poor Megan. And uh, I suppose they'll have to go back to the drawing board, won't they? Well, dare I say, because she's boring. This is the thing. She is inherently boring. Now, again, I, I, I understand that there's a whole industry in beating the living uh, verbally out of these two. But I've watched the docos, I've listened to some of these things, 
and there's just not an X factor there. But what are we hearing about uh, how they're trying to come back? Because again, their exit from Spotify, pretty absolute. Um, do they have a team of people trying to find them new jobs or will they have to self-fund from here on? Well, I mean, I, I, the, the big thing is that they're going to need a lot of money to sell fund because they've already got huge overheads. Harry is fighting court case after court case, it seems. And it's either, uh, who knows? I mean, they, they have employed an awful lot of people over the last few years. There's been uh, reports made about the sort of transition of staff that they have had in that couple of years. People that's coming and going as fast as they arrive. So. Uh, I think that this is an opportunity for them to try and take stock of what has happened. There has been an awful lot that has happened over the last three years since they decided to leave the royal family. I think in some instances they were trying to do it all at once. And, you know, it's, a, it's an unforgiving game, the media business. I mean, these are big, big numbers that they were talking. They were trying to capitalise on their celebrity. And it's come at huge collateral damage, hasn't it? Because Harry's family aren't talking to him. We've had the Netflix series. We've had the book. And it seems as though you know, those relationships are so fractured that maybe there's not, uh, maybe there is an opportunity to try and take their foot off the gas and, uh, and take stock of one or two things in their lives. Russell Myers from the Daily Mirror, lovely to talk to you. Do so again soon. Cheers, mate.